Okay, so in the previous tutorial, we built our little boxy uh, rig, and we isolated it in such a way that um, we put the uh, the geometry, the boxy geometry, <clears throat> and uh, the bend handle, and that stuff in a uh, layer that we uh, reference, so we can't select anything. And we did the same thing with the the ground plane, right? So the little stage itself. <clears throat> now, one thing that's uh, because we can't select it uh, now, right? Is that um, uh, if I want to do the bend, I don't have any way to really do this other than going in and selecting the inputs and getting to it. And uh, and again, I'm on my other machine that the Magic Mouse doesn't like to do the little scrubbing through there. Um, so uh, just not going to show how that's working interactively, but um, this is not really a good workflow, right? Uh, the other thing too is uh, for my boxy controller, I have things like scale and visibility visible uh, in the channel box, and I don't want those either. So um, what we're going to do is a little connection editor, and I have another tutorial that's a little more advanced. Uh, um, if you're going to add, say, a twist or something later on in this class, but I'll just show the basics right now. So the channel box has these list of attributes. There's actually, you know, it seems like damn near 100 or so of the attributes, but you don't need, you know, some of those advanced features, obviously. There are things that you're not going to keyframe. And these are the most um, common, so that's why they're in the list. But you can edit this list and you can add to that list. So what we're going to do is create an attribute called bend that's uh, part of the boxy controller, and then we're going to connect that attribute to the curvature attribute for this bend handle so that instead of having to go into the outliner and select all this, hopefully when you're animating, since we just have this one controller, this is all you should need to select, right, is your animating in your scene and well, we'll show a little keyframing here in a minute. Um, so we're, we're just making an association. When this happens, that also will, will drive this other thing, right? So let's go to um, uh, modify and what we're going to do is add an attribute, okay, for the boxy controller. Oh, and, and let's just make sure, select this controller itself, right? I know in the outliner, if we look at this, it looks like everything's selected, but it's just highlighting green all the children in the hierarchy. It's not actually selecting all of them. If I hold down shift and select everything, you can see they're actually all white, right? So I just want the controller selected. <clears throat> and I go up to modify and add attribute. And let's just give this a name. Ooh, mystery. Let's just call it bend, right? Um, the rest of this is it's keyable. Most of the stuff you would not change. Float just means that the number is going to be a number that has a decimal point in it, right? So the, the bend could be 5.25 or something like that. There are different types, data types up here. Um, I would say almost always it will be a float if you ever get to this more complicated stuff. Um, in our intro class, you would never change this. Um, there's a minimum and a maximum. In this case, we don't want to define that. We don't want to put a threshold, a, you know, basically a floor and a ceiling on that number. And the default is just going to be zero, right? So that should be fine. So when I hit uh, OK, this is going to go away. And what you'll see is over here on the channel box, you'll see bend appear, right? So you can see bend is now in that list. <clears throat> so um, you can see it's down here at the bottom. It's right next to visibility. What am I going to animate visibility? And the other thing I don't want to do is animate scale um, in this little animation. So I'm going to highlight those attributes and then just going to right click. And again, there's just you know lots of different things we can do, duplicate values, blah, 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 lots of things here. Um, half of these, I some of these I've never even used, actually. Um, um, but the one thing we want to do as far as cleaning things up, there's these lock uh, selected and hide selected. So if we lock something, um, that would just be grayed out. Maybe I'll show that in a second. Um, but what I want to do is lock and hide selected. Um, so um, what's this, this is going to do is remove those from the list. It also locked them so that I can't actually do anything with it. So you can see um, when I hit, when I grab the scale tool or R on your keyboard for the hotkey, 
you can see it's totally grayed out. There's nothing that I can do with it, right? It's just like, I'm, I'm, you're, you're not allowed to do anything. So if I did, just so you can see what it's like, if I went up to translate and I went and said lock selected, you can see there's these little gray boxes next to it. And this just means that I see that it's there, but you can see the handle is all grayed out, right? So I can't do anything. So sometimes that's a good thing to do with a camera. Like if, if you get your camera where you want it to be and you're like, don't move, don't accidentally move it when you're doing your navigating in 3D space. Um, and when you decide, hey, I don't need that to be locked anymore, obviously we can go back and say, unlock selected. All right, so what we've done is we've created this uh, bend attribute. It doesn't do anything, right? If I say 50, it just says 50, right? It's not connected to a thing that actually does something. All right, so I'm gonna make sure that that um, bend is still active and I'm gonna go up to Windows general editors and connection editor, right? So I'm gonna leave that highlighted up on the screen. So there's a lots of different windows. Um, some of them are like really old, uh, like core Maya things from many, many, many years ago. The component editor is basically like a spreadsheet of numbers. Um, the connection editor is just a list. It's a list of the attributes on one object and then we can load another object in the other side. So. Again, Windows, General Editors, Connection Editor, and I'll bring that up. Um, and it, at the top here, we have these Reload Left and Reload Right. Um, so we can, you know, we'll use this here in a second. So right now I have the Reload uh, Left. I don't need, need to load anything because it was selected. So it already did that. So here's Boxy Control. You can see it has all these attributes in here. Um, see, there's Translate, right? We saw Translate X, Y, and Z. The reason it's nested here is you might just say, hey, instead of having to select all three of these, I want you know, all the translate of this to equal all the translate of something else. But you could also do something where you'd say, hey, whenever I translate the Y of one object, I want that number to equal the translate Z of another object or the rotate X or something. So you can see you can create these drivers basically. Um, and there are other ways to do this, writing code or something like that, but this is obviously the easiest thing to do. And if we go down to the bottom, this is usually where any custom attributes are added, you can see bend, right? So um, the next thing we need to do is reload the right, and this would be the bend handle. Now this is a little tricky here, because the bend, when we select it, it actually, uh, let's see if we do it this way, let's see if it will give me what I want. Yeah, so that's what I thought. So, oh, there it is. Uh, no, there it is, okay. So when you select the bend handle, you can go ahead and um, go down here and select the inputs. Make sure this is selected. This is the thing actually, right? This is the transform node. This is the component to that. Um, uh, there are other ways to do that, but really what we want to do is um, we have these both listed, right? So I selected it and I say reload right and it brought that in there, right? Um, the other thing is you can toggle back and forth. You can say I want something from this column to drive, go from here to this. Um, uh, we could also switch it if you want to, just for whatever reason, but I always work from uh, the left to the right. That's the default. So if I click on bend, it highlights. It also highlights things that I can connect to. And right now I'm just gonna go ahead and click a uh, curvature. And you can see that the curvature went back to zero because that's what I'd left bend at before. You can also see over here in the curvature input, it has a yellow box to, next to it. So that now says, hey, I have a connection coming into me and it's gonna tell me what to do. You're not gonna do this manually right here. We can go ahead and close this. So I can select that, and if I go to bend, and if I say 25, you can see that it's all there. So you might be saying, well, why don't I just use the bend handle? It already had that on there. The whole idea is that we want to have all the controls that we want without having to dig in the outliner, right? I, once I start animating, I don't even want to touch that. I just want to select the thing that I'm supposed to select, my little controller for Boxy, and I can do all the little things that uh, I need to do there. All right, um, I will call that a wraps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.